In this video, we're going to learn how to take care of a patient with an external ventricular drain, also known as an EVD drain. An external ventricular drain is a temporary drain that both invasively measures intracranial pressure, or ICP, and removes excess cerebral spinal fluid, also known as CSF. It is typically used when the ICP is increased, for example, in the case of hemorrhage, large strokes, tumors, or severe head trauma. Because the volume of the skull is fixed, brain swelling, hemorrhage, or an obstruction in CSF flow can increase the intracranial pressure. As the intracranial pressure rises, the cerebral perfusion pressure will decrease. Too much of a decrease in the cerebral perfusion pressure can cause the brain cells to die. Having an EVD drain inserted may reduce morbidity and mortality by helping relieve some of the pressure on the skull. Now that we know what an EVD is, let's talk about some of the things you might encounter as a nurse when taking care of a patient with an EVD drain. You may need to help set up the drainage system. This would include attaching the transducer to the drain and priming the drain. For insertion, these are the supplies that you will need to gather. An EVD drainage device. In this video, we will be using a Nottis, but if you would like to see an overview of another EVD device, please comment below. We also need a transducer, and for this, we're going to use an arterial line transducer. We're going to disconnect the tubing, and we're only going to use the actual transducer that comes in the kit. We need a pressure cable. We also need sterile, preservative-free, normal saline, PPE, which would include a mask, hat, and sterile gloves, EVD dressing supplies, which will be an occlusive, transparent dressing. At my hospital, we are using the dressings with the antibacterial gel. You will also need a cranial access kit, sutures, and DuraPrep. Priming the EVD. The first thing that you will need is preservative-free normal saline. We will use this to prime the EVD. We will also need a transducer from a regular pressure kit, but we will only be using the transducer and not the tubing that comes with the kit. First, we will attach the transducer to the panel stopcock at the zero point. Now you're ready to prime the system. Priming the EVD is done prior to connecting the drain to the patient, and usually the nurses are only priming the part with the transducer to the drip chamber. Most of the time, the physician that is inserting the EVD drain is the one that is going to prime the tubing that is going from the patient that will be connected to the EVD drain. He will prime that with CSF fluid. With the normal saline, prime the tubing from the pressure transducer towards the burette which is also known as the EVD drip chamber. Inspect the line for air bubbles. Once you finish priming, remember to cut this tab right here. Your EVD is now primed and ready to attach to the IV pole. To attach, first anchor the suspension cord to the top of the pole. Then secure the drainage system to the IV pole by screwing it into the pole. Once the EVD is inserted, the next step will be to level the drainage system to the patient. You will want to attach the leveler to the drainage system. There are many different types of levelers. You can use a string leveler, which is what I'm going to show in this video, or you can also use a leveler that looks like a ruler if you have it, or you can use a laser light leveler. All of them use a bubble vial like this, and your goal is to get the bubble in the middle of the two lines. Once you have the bubble in the appropriate place, now it's time to measure to your patient. You start at the zero pressure reference point and go to the external auditory canal of the patient's ear, and then adjust the EVD as needed to level to the external auditory canal. Now it's time to connect the EVD to the bedside monitor. You will do this by taking the pressure cable and connecting it to the transducer. Next, plug the pressure cable into the bedside monitor and wait for the window to pop up. Then select ICP. And now we will zero the transducer. To zero the transducer, you will turn the transducer stopcock off to the system, open the transducer to air, press zero on the bedside monitor, and then place a new red cap on it. The transducer on the EVD must be zeroed 
to the bedside monitor with insertion when connecting to a transfer monitor. At the change of shift, whenever the transducer cable has been disconnected from the monitor or when you're troubleshooting the system. Now, let's talk about the nursing care associated with the patient with an EVD. First, we must be able to differentiate between millimeters of mercury and centimeters of water. Your provider will write orders to the appropriate centimeters of water or millimeters of mercury. And with this order, you will adjust the height of the EVD drip chamber by loosening this knob and moving the burette up or down. Now, we will go over how to obtain ICP reading. You cannot drain CSF and monitor ICP at the same time with this device. So we will need to temporarily stop the CSF draining and you will do that by turning the stopcock off to the EVD drip chamber. When your patient is clamped off to drainage and open to the transducer, you will obtain an ICP waveform. You will need to allow the ICP to stabilize for about 30 seconds to a minute for accuracy. To resume draining, position the stopcock so it is turned towards the transducer. Here is what the most common ICP waveform will look like. It's known to have three P's in descending order just like this. The first one is called P1, which is an arterial pulse. And then you have P2, which is cerebral compliance. And then P3, which is the dichrotic notch. So you usually see it in descending order like this. Now, let's talk about how the physician orders might look. The orders might denote how the ordering provider wants CSF drained. Here are a few examples of what you might see. Drain 10 mLs Q1 hour or drain CSF to maintain ICP of 10 or less. There are multiple ways providers can write this order. Now let's talk about the drip chamber. Once the clamps are open and if the patient's ICP is greater than what the EVD is set at, you will start to see cerebral spinal fluid drip into the drip chamber. Depending on the order, you can allow the fluid to collect and then when it's time to empty the fluid, which is usually every hour, you will first record the amount, which will need to be documented. Then you will turn this clamp off to the patient. And with this clamp, you will open the drip chamber and allow the fluid to go into the drainage bag. Then you will close both clamps and allow the fluid to start collecting again. Be sure to document the amount that is drained every hour and also make sure you document the drainage description. The nurses must also make sure they're documenting their ICPs, narrow checks, and site assessments every hour. Precautions. A normal ICP is between 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Anything over 20 millimeters of mercury for more than 5 minutes is a medical emergency and the provider should be notified immediately. Also, make sure anytime you move a patient or if the head of bed goes up or down, you have to turn the stopcock off to the patient because the change in position can increase the amount of CSF that is drained. Troubleshooting. If the EVD stops draining, it could be because the true ICP is lower than what the EVD is set to drain at, or it could be clotted off. One technique to assess if the drain has clotted off is to take the EVD off the IV pole and lower it well below the insertion point. If the EVD is not draining after performing this, it is either clotted off or a stopcock is closed. If a stopcock is not closed, we would assume a clog of some sort, in which case we need to notify the provider immediately. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more IC videos, then just give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!